it's the 9th of February today. Um, we're going to head out on the fields behind me, look for some rodos. Uh, I think in 2007 they changed the seasons for the females so that they used to finish at the end of February. Now they go until the end of March, but we still try and finish our uh, rodos at the end of February, and that gives us all of March to concentrate on the muntjac then. So we'll head out on these fields behind, see what's there. If there's nothing there or nothing shootable, we'll probably come back to the vehicle, look somewhere else. So we've just come around the bottom of the wood. We've just pushed a muntjac out of this pit at the bottom here, which has run away from us. Luckily it hasn't run around the corner where we're actually looking. We'll just keep going around, see if anything's there. So we've just come to the bottom corner. There's nothing out in immediately in front of us, but there's four row, about 300 metres up in the field. So we'll probably have to go back around the other side of the wood, come up the other side, come through, see if we can get close enough to get a shot on those. We should be safe the way the ground is, um, where they are as long as they pull back into the wood. Just cutting through the wood. I think it's probably a different row than the ones we saw in the distance. You can just see it through the trees here. There's quite a lot of pigeons being flapping out of the um, ivy on the trees, which obviously alerts the deer that something might be coming. Okay, we'll just keep down. It's the same four row deer that we saw from the bottom of the wood. They're about 150 metres through here now. It's still a little bit in line with the um, end of the chicken unit. So obviously we've got to try and get them to pull back into the wood a little bit. Because obviously we can't get any further out, they're going to see us. So as we're looking across there, the very left hand one, which is to the right of the trailer in the background, that's a row doe. Then the next one across is a row buck. You can see it's got two or three inches of antler growth on it, so it's quite a young one. Um, and then two more to the right of it, which both look like does at the moment, but probably need to get a better look on them. that um, if you imagine that roebuck was a buck kid it wouldn't be showing visible antlers yet you might just see some little pedicles on its head but when they stood side on like that if it puts its head up and stands dead square on you can see a bit of hair coming off the willy and then on the females obviously on their rump patch they have a tuft of hair that sticks out which uh, denotes that it's a female So they've just, somebody's just spooked them, they've just run towards us a little bit. There's still not really a shot on anything on the left hand side. And I'd like the two on the right to be a little bit more to the right, so they're just a bit further away from those chicken sheds. Yeah, at the moment. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, far right. There's no shot because that other one stood behind it. Just keep dead still. Okay, so now the second from the right, yeah? Yeah. No help at all. Stay on the second from the right, the one that's got its head down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just gone down, or going down. So, just shot a, a young doe. Uh, the others have run away up to the other end of the wood. Just gone too far, otherwise we could have tried to get another one. So it wasn't a great angle, it was stood at, we'll have a look at the carcass when we get there, but it was a pretty front on shot, but uh, needs must when you're culling rather than, you know, recreational stalking. So, good, what time is it? 10 to eight, got one down and we can head back to the truck in a minute and go and look somewhere else for another one. So, young roe doe, you can see the anal tush on the back there, which shows you it's a doe. Uh, bullet's gone in, just behind the shoulder on the left hand side. Uh, it's come out sort of just beyond the, the liver on the other side. Uh, this is 243 uh, copper bullets, so didn't fall over straight away, but uh, it was obviously dead running. Yeah, just a nice condition, young doe. And we'll get this back to the larder, get it sorted out and go on for another one, I think. So here we've got um, carrots which have been seeded under this plastic which is perforated for obviously let the, uh, the air in and, and let some water in but one of the big problems we have on the estate, not so much in this area, um, but around our big wood uh, and on the, the high travel routes for our red deer is that obviously the deer walk on the same tracks all through the year and then all of a sudden a, a field of uh, plastic goes down and of course they just keep ploughing through it. Um, the problem with that is obviously they, they damage it, put holes in the plastic, um, and uh, obviously that compromises the, the conditions that the, the carrots are growing in, but also the wind can then get in the, the deer footholes and uh, potentially rip all the plastic off the field. So in certain areas we're keeping a real eye on that um, and try and uh, dissuade the deer as much as possible from going across it.
so we're just finishing the larder. It's five to nine now. We'll just drive round to another area on the estate. See if we can find any more row. Uh, the only problem now is they might all just be sat down after feeding first thing, but we're going to have a look, see how we get on, try not to crash into a lorry. And uh, yeah, we've just driven down the road. Uh, there's, looks like four or five row laid out in a field um, over to my right, the other side of the, the next hedge. We'll just drive up to this abandoned uh, farmyard up here, have a look on the field surrounding it. And then we'll try and work out a plan, see if we can get close enough to them. Yeah, so that's a, a row doe and a buck. We've just pushed out of this tree line behind us. We've just pulled in here, just the other side of a quiet country road. We're just going to walk over the other side of it. We drove down to the farmyard in the middle of that group of fields. And there's some roe deer out uh, a couple of fields over away from us now. They were kind of aware that the vehicle was moving around. So hopefully they'll still be stood up. We'll just see if we can get across the field and get into a position to take a shot on them. go across this field to my left there's a big oak tree out there so we'll head for that try and use that as a bit of cover and just as we go out across the field we'll just keep stopping and checking looking through the, the hedgerow try and locate where those row were on the other side of it we're about 150 meters off the the hedge that we're heading towards now i can just see the row through the hedgerow there, stood up feeding just through here. So we'll just keep going steady. Obviously we're gonna drop down into a little dip which will help for a little bit. And then hopefully that hedge will just hide us as we go across to where that oak tree is and then have a better look and try and work out what we can do about it. So just looking into the next field and just to the left of the third oak tree away from us, there's a roebuck sat against it. There might be some does there with it as well or it might just be on its own so I'll just keep going slowly. that we we're heading for originally. We'll just see them through a gap in the hedge. We've got five roe deer out there. Um, two of them are standing up, the other three are sat down. There's certainly a couple of bucks in there. And now only one standing up. through this hedge. So it looks like we've got two bucks and three does. The left hand one that's still stood up is a doe, just need to get it turned a little bit better to have a shot. Some of the ones that are sat down, well one of the ones that are sat down, the second from the left, looking straight at us.
Okay, you on that one on the left? No, it's just not stood right at the moment. Just keep on a matter. Is that one on the left as well? going down. Good, so we shot two does and that leaves uh, two bucks running away and uh, there's another doe that's running away with them as well. Just as we uh, stood there I noticed as well there's another couple of row sat down on the far left, another sort of three, four hundred metres away from the ones we just shot at. They're still sat there, they don't really know what's happened. So, got a bit uh, overexcited of myself there. The first one I, um, I was just about to shoot and I felt myself sort of dipping forward and almost uh, sort of snatching at the shot, so I just had to stop and uh, just sort my life out a bit <laughs> and uh, yeah shot that first one as a good thump on that um, and then the second one uh, we stood dead side on uh, shot that and there wasn't a lot of uh, sound from the bullet hitting the body at all which was a bit disconcerting but it's gone over okay uh, these are quite light bullets these copper 243s so um, unless you hit like a good bit of bone on the way in. Sometimes they don't make much of a noise. But they're both down, so we'll give it a few minutes and we'll go and have a look and see what happened. So, just got up to these deer, a um, couple of uh, sort of young roe does. Uh, this was the first one we shot. Uh, there's no point lying because you're going to see it on the film. It wasn't a great shot on my part. Um, hit it high, so it's actually broke its spine, so that's why it went straight down probably on the, on the camera. Um, the deer actually weren't quite as far away as I thought they were, so I range find them with the binos and it said 210 so I clicked the scope up because we had enough time to do that um, which obviously why I hit that one a bit too high uh, and then the second one we shot had uh, run a bit further out to the actual distance uh, for the, uh, the, the scope zero after I clicked it up so um, that one was shot just behind the shoulder pretty much the right place. Um, yeah this area is like up on our boundary side uh, the uh, landowner next door doesn't really let anyone shoot any deer uh, so there's always a healthy number of roe here so 
this time of year it's just a case of trying to bring numbers down a little bit really so it's whichever ones uh, stand right and you can get a shot on so um, a couple of good carcasses um, the game dealer probably won't want the one that's been hit through the uh, saddle so we'll have to use that ourselves but the other one will go off to the game dealer and uh, yeah be some good eating so we'll get these sorted out of the larder and then uh, go and have some breakfast ourselves hopefully Got a nice young six point roebuck out there. Just a really nice one to leave for the future. See, he's got quite a thin neck on him. Uh, obviously when they get older, they get uh, thick neck, thick front shoulders. Uh, the head isn't held quite as high. So yeah, he's a cracker. He sort of knows we're here, but doesn't know quite what we are. You can see when they're alerted they flare out their rump patch so it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. And you can see when he stood side on there you can see the, the hair coming down from his pizzle. So that's us for the morning. Uh, thanks very much for watching again. Uh, next month we'll be doing Chinese water deer uh, in March, hopefully. Uh, season ends Chinese water deer at the end of March, along with all the, the females in England. Um, yeah, and then obviously we'll be hopefully continuing on through into April for, uh, for Robux. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that and keep the, uh, the powers that be happy. Cheers.